the magic word is start. Go ugly early. Like, don't just get out of your head, just do the thing. It just has taken me a long, long time to say it is worth taking the risk and just doing the thing. And it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but the fact that you're doing it, that you're trying, that you're putting something, uh, that you're, you're putting effort into it, um, it's just going to elevate you as a person. And people are going to feel that. So you got this. People are more invested when they're paying money, right? So there's this, this feeling that they're already showing up to the table with like pen in hand and like ready for you to lead them versus somebody that's in uh, interviewing you to figure out if they want to hire you. On this episode of the podcast, we talk about how offering strategic workshops to clients can be a game changer for your business. And we're gonna explore ways to package and price these sessions that'll have clients seeing massive value and happily paying you for it. We also go over some insider tips on finding work and promoting yourself like a boss, whether you're just starting out or looking to level up, we've got some actionable advice to get you in front of your ideal clients. And then finally on this episode, we go over the nitty gritty on retainers, contracts and partnerships. We're gonna tackle the importance of getting things in writing, even with longtime clients, how to structure retainer agreements and navigating business partnerships. Oh yeah, lots of gold here. Glad you're here. What's up, my friend? Hey, welcome to the Grow Your Video Business Show. I am Ryan Coral, your host, and I'm very excited about our episode today. Uh, but before we get into it, I just want to say, uh, if you're a video business owner and you are looking to find more freedoms in your in your work, uh, maybe better life work balance, whatever that means. Uh, if you want to be able to charge more for the work that you're doing, if you're trying to figure out how to navigate this work uh, with the challenges of AI or the challenges of somebody down the street charging less than what you do and they're doing it better, uh, this show is designed for you. I started my video production business uh, over 20 years ago and uh, it has been a journey and uh, this show really is designed to be able to give you some tools, uh, some resources, some things that you can do to uh, not make as many mistakes as me or some of my guests uh, have made in their own businesses, uh, but to be able to fail faster, to learn from my mistakes, uh, and, and really just to be able to enjoy this work. Uh, it's challenging, but it is so worth it. This episode in particular, uh, I borrowed one of the coaching calls uh, that I do on a monthly basis for our 10X Filmmaker community. So this is uh, for context, uh, once a month, I host these uh, these coaching calls uh, for the paid group um, that I run called 10X Filmmaker. And uh, people bring questions to the group and I go over, I answer them as best I can. And so these are some of the questions that came up in uh, one of our most recent calls. So you get an insider look at what 10X Filmmaker is, what we do inside of that group or one of the elements that we do inside of that group. We also have monthly master classes. Uh, we'll bring in live presenters uh, who are amazing at what they do. And uh, we give opportunity for uh, our members to be able to ask questions. And uh, so it's about education. There's a community aspect, coaching aspects, and um, it's really good. So <laughs> if you've thought about it, you heard about it, or maybe you haven't heard about it and you want to know more, you can go to studiosherpas.com slash 10x filmmaker. It's the number 10 the letter X, the word filmmaker, and uh, all the information about 10X Filmmaker is in there. And we only open the doors publicly twice a year, so it is a very, um, uh, you can't always get in. So go check that out if you want more information. So glad you're here. And with that, let's jump into this episode. So I'm here to uh, just help however can. Uh, you can drop questions in the chats. Um, I'm curious to know who is offering some kind of a workshop with your clients before they commit to any type of um, video, right? People call you, inquire, asking you to give them a quote for the video that they have a need for. Uh, but have you ever pushed back 
and said, yep, I can totally get you a price for that. But it sounds like based on what you said, what you need is something along the lines of this workshop that we offer. So curious to know uh, who is doing a workshop and if this is enticing and if you've gone through the blueprint method and you're still not doing it, because uh, maybe all you need to do is go through the workshop. So I'm going to stop talking. Uh, Larry's done it. Kudos to Larry. And then here, Simon says, uh, I pitched it the last few times, but have not gotten a bite. Um, Simon, you want to hop on and chat about that? It's good to see your face too, by the way. Hey, thank you, man. Happy to be a part of this. Um, so yeah, our predominant niche is like nonprofits. And the last couple of times I've pitched it, it's it's kind of been an interesting flow because they haven't had the budget for some of the projects. And it's kind of been like, not correctly aligned for what they were wanting to get for like the amount of funds that they had so when we pitched it it just kind of didn't work out um but then instead of that i was pitching the like 21 and one as well it's like okay cool you don't have the budget to do the full brand video for your like capital campaign thing but what if we create like video assets for the website to help convert um some of the like fans of the nonprofits to become donors and stuff like that. And so yeah. we'll see how it goes. Nonprofits are kind of slow to respond. So it's always interesting. I feel like who, what, what industries are fast to respond? Cause I feel like they're all slow to respond. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm wondering when, so you haven't done a workshop yet. Is that correct? No, I have not done one yet. Okay. So, <clears throat> I mean, I, I, I feel like the best way to do it is really just to do one and, you know, get it under your, under your belt to just say like, okay, got one done. That was clunky. It's awkward. <clears throat> if you can sell it, great. But like, you know, when we all started, I mean, raise your hand if you ever did free work before, because you wanted to work with a certain client or you wanted something for your reel or yeah. So like we've all been there and done that. And I think the workshop is kind of the same it, it can be the same thing. I was very fortunate when uh, I did my first workshop because I had just worked with a guy who charged $2,500 for his consulting and he wanted me to do a consulting thing for him. And I was like, okay, I'll do this thing and I'll call it a workshop and uh, and I'll just charge what he charges. And I was shocked that he paid me $2,500 because I'm like, this is, this is stuff that I already do like in my meetings with clients. And usually I'm doing this before they even book me. And then 50% of the time, they don't even book me, right? They, I feel like they just took all my great ideas that I just gave them and then, or maybe they didn't even do video. And I spent all this time and energy doing research and, you know, and, and, and I didn't win the job and man, that's so frustrating. So I, I was very fortunate to have the very first one uh, where the guy was like, yeah, I mean, I, this is what I charge. If you're going to charge me 25, that sounds great. And then he loved it. He loved the experience <clears throat> and the entire time. All I'm thinking is this guy is a pro. I'm going to ask dumb questions and he's going to be like, at the end of the day, like, are you serious? I paid $2,500 for this. But again, getting in our head, if you have a plan and you can think through what's the desired outcome, what do we want at the end of this workshop? And then, and then I'm going to create a blueprint. What, what am I going to create? I mean, now we've got chat GPT where we can just say like, Hey, help me create an outline of a you know some kind of a roadmap or a blueprint for somebody's video and and it can give you now it's not going to be as great as the video blueprint method outline that is in the course obviously um but you know i just say that because <clears throat> the information's out there and if you can kind of start with like what does at least the skeleton look like so you can build some confidence and feel like okay like i, I could probably do that and the first one is going to be terrible right just like your first youtube video that you ever posted if you ever posted one it's embarrassing it's garbage uh, if i looked at the the thing that i did for preston i mean it was helpful for him he paid me $2500 people are more invested when they're paying money right so there's this this feeling that they're already showing up to the table with like pen in hand and like ready for you to lead them versus somebody that's in uh, interviewing you to figure out if they want to hire you and then 
you start throwing out ideas and you could try this and trick. And then they get in their head and think like, is this guy just trying to like sell me something that I'm not even sure that we need this kind of video. He's talking about a brand video, but I thought we just needed like an explainer video that talked about who we are and what we do. And, and here you are talking about the story and it's going to evoke emotion and people are going to cry and, you know, people are going to be more willing to give money if they cry. Is he just trying to sell us on this? Cause you know, I don't, I don't know. But as soon as they've got some skin in the game, whether it's, you know, $500 or $2,500 or, you know, just something to say, hey, I have this workshop that I take people through. Um, and the the outcome that you're going to get is this roadmap. And then again, you don't have to hire us to do this production. I'll give you some costs. Break that. I'll, I'll, I'll create usually three packages that you can choose from based on what you guys are already telling me you think your budget range is. So it, these are all things that can help them identify what their budget is for a video where they might be like, I don't, we don't, we, we're not sure yet. We're hoping you can tell us. <clears throat> and then I can fall back on like, okay, well, most brand videos, like the most simplest basic one is going to start at $10,000. And that's like, I, I don't even know if that's what you guys need. You, after talking to you more, you might find out that you, you might be a better fit for the fifteen or the twenty thousand dollar brand video. But if you're not willing to spend between ten and twenty thousand dollars for a brand video, then like golly, I don't even want to try to pitch you on this this workshop. Uh, but this workshop is intended to inform this video over here. Now, if if you keep talking to freelance video people or your, your nephew's got a camera and you want him to shoot the video because he's going to do it for free or for, you know, 200 bucks. You could hire me to help create the outline of this thing and help, help uh, understand your story better and even create some talking points, uh, interview questions. Uh, that's the difference between, you know, somebody like me and just a uh, art, you know, my studio or our agency versus, just a freelancer who, who, you know, can, has a camera and can make good videos. But if you want them to make strategic and informed video, then you can hire me to create this plan. And then your, your nephew can execute it. Right. So you're going to save a lot of money by not, you know, not spending $10,000 and hire us to do the production, but I'm going to give you this framework. That's worth, I mean, it's worth at least $5,000 because if you don't have a good, smart, intentional, strategic video, why do video at all? Um, so unless your your nephew is like very experienced with creating these kinds of videos, um, you know, consider this kind of workshop. People love the idea of it, right? Because nonprofits, businesses, they're, they hire consultants for all different aspects of their business. And so it's not like a new concept for them. The idea of, of a consultant for video probably is a newer idea for them, right? They just think videographer, like, oh yeah, we'll hire somebody to capture our event and then we'll create a little recap because that's what most people have have done or do. Um, so I say all that to say, one thing to consider maybe is to go to one of these nonprofits, you know, one that you really like, not just, you know, let me just find the first taker and say, hey, what would you guys be interested? I know I normally charge uh, for this workshop, I normally charge, you know, let's just say a thousand bucks. Um, I would love to do it for you guys at a fraction of the cost. Here's what, here's what you're going to get. You know, you're going to get this roadmap. You're going to get this outline. You're going to get interview questions that you can ask and, and just like a, a way to make this video. So even if you're not ready to make it now, I'm going to work with you and your leadership team to kind of hone in on what the important things are. I would love to be considered when you guys are ready and I'll give you price points on what it would cost. Um, but I'll do it for, you know, 75% off, you know, 250 bucks, something that gets them to spend a little bit of money because as soon as, as soon as they spend a little bit of money, then they're showing up with like, Hey, we paid for this. So stakeholder number one, two, three, and four, you guys got to show up to this meeting. We paid for this, you know, a nonprofit 250 bucks is, uh, you know, for some that that's, probably a significant investment and for others. It's like, <laughs> I'm not showing up to that thing. Good luck. You know, do your best. Um, what do you, what do you think about doing something like, uh, like, like a free or very low cost? Um, do you think, do you think that might be worthwhile pursuing? Yeah, I think that'd be super good. Um, especially because kind of within our discovery call process and the proposal process, we're kind of almost doing the blueprint thing, but yet it's like after it's booked, then we're figuring it all out. But 
getting it down to where we feel comfortable with it and constantly being able to pitch it and stuff and just kind of getting that workflow down of like this is our new processes i yeah. think that's good what me and my partner wanted to do is kind of just like restructure everything to be more efficient and to be better so i'm super down to try it I've, I've watched the video blueprints a couple of times i'm like oh this is super dope i think this is exactly what we need the part that i'm trying to like figure out is how to create the best content for nonprofits because like their marketing strategies are all super weird. So at the same time, it's like we have to create the content, but then also help them implement everything. And so just trying to learn all of those marketing things has been interesting. Um, yeah. But I think it's going to be awesome. Well, <clears throat> you know, the the what you get from doing the one in in how you get them to sign up is say, like, I'm willing to do this at this deep discount if you'll provide me with a, a testimonial, right? So like somebody from your team, if I could just get five or 10 minutes, we can do a zoom call or, you know, whatever, where you just like talk about the process, what it was like, how it helped you. Um, so if you guys would be willing to do that, I, I'd be willing to do this. Cause I'm trying to, I know that this workshop is going to help so many more people and, and I just want to get word out. And I think you guys would be a great case study. And, and I would love to feature you in, in this project and you'll get a little bit more exposure because I'm going to, uh, be sharing the, the work that we did with you guys. Um, the other thing to consider too, it's July. I, I feel like a lot of nonprofits, uh, you know, they have end of the year needs. They'll do their galas like later in the year. So this is a great time, you know, regardless of all the other strategy that a nonprofit needs or has to do, should be doing. Uh, the one that is probably the easiest lift is like, let us create some emotive stories or a emotive story that you can play at your event that's going to evoke emotion and tears and get people more willing to give you money, right? That's the, that's the easiest one to measure, right? You don't have to put it on YouTube and like, you know, try to count how many views it gets or Wistia and try to, you know, see what the engagement or, you know, it's not a lead magnet. They're not having to sign up to an email. They're already at the event. They're there. It's like, okay, did you guys do a video last year? No, or you did. And maybe it wasn't, it was just like a highlight video of some sort, but I guarantee if, if you guys budget the time, energy and effort into creating you know, one of your, your transformation stories of who you're helping and you play that at your event with the call to action, not just play it at your event. Cause I, I know there's one nonprofit that we work with that they barely ask for money at their big event. Their one big event that you're at. Cause they're, they're just like, well, we asked for people through, you know, all throughout the year. So we kind of feel bad. I'm like, you guys are killing me and, and you're killing yourself by like, not saying like, if you believe in this mission, this, these are the kinds of lives that we're impacting here. Come alongside and join us. If you feel a teeny tug on your heart, like we want to partner with you, even if it's the in the smallest way, these are the lives that you're impacting when you partner with us. Freaking do it, okay? Maybe drop some F-bombs at a nonprofit event and just see if it helps. Um, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Don't take my advice there, but. Um, Sometimes it might help. Depends on the demographic they serve. Exactly. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. So, um, what, what, uh, what, what are you walking away from this with? Um, I think I'm going to walk away with this, that I need to pitch the video blueprint a couple times, get a couple of free ones or significantly discounted rates and just kind of learn it, implement it, get the testimonials, have like a good offboarding process with that client. And then just kind of like mesh it into the pricing and the workflow for like um, all of our clients from here on out, because we just did a, a bigger project with our local fire department and we're noticing that like no fire departments have any good anything. So it's going to be a good thing that we can kind of replicate over and over again to where it's like, cool, we redo your website. We come in and do uh, recruitment videos. And after this, it'll be like, all right, I definitely want to use this video blueprint to like have either a brand story or some sort of like an impact story. And yeah. it's kind of like, toss everything together and do it. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be cool. I love it. That's great. I would also say, um, I think you, if you're going to do a free one or like a deeply discounted one, I think you probably just need one, like get one under your belt so that you have that testimonial and, and you have that confidence of like, okay, we did it. You could even share that blueprint with who you're, who you're trying to pitch it to. Uh, let them see like, what are we actually getting? Cause that, that, that is helpful for some people to see like the tactical, like, Okay, tactical, tactile, 
uh, even if it's a digital PDF, right? For them to see that and be like, oh, wow, this is actually cool. Like there's some, there, there's a clear process to what they're doing here. Um, so, so do that first one. And one final note here, you can like, think of your own business and think of doing this for your own business. What would a blueprints workshop look like? You know, take yourself sound like you have a business partner or somebody go through that process just for you guys and, and then create a blueprint, you know, for you that you can share with people. And then, you know, that's, it's kind of like, uh, it's working in multiple ways. Not only are you, now do you have like a cool, uh, PDF to show somebody of your blueprint, but then like, if it's really your heartbeat, your brand story, like they're going to get a little bit more invested and see like, oh man, they, they really care about making a difference or working with nonprofit, you know, whatever those things are, there's a, there's some, you know, subtle things in there. And then if you have the time and space, which none of us do, uh, to actually create that video, to not just create the blueprint, but having that blueprint, um, because if you could show somebody, here's the video that was produced from this blueprint, then it's just like, you know, you've got all the things and uh, it becomes, I think, a lot easier to sell at that point. Yeah, that's a great idea. We're, we're definitely going to implement that and do that. I like Sweet. that. Awesome, man. Um, good stuff. Uh, let's see here. Uh, okay, so Aaron says, how to get jobs or opportunities that are simple or less paying but can help with the monthly cash flow now? Long-term relationships, brand et cetera, is the big game. Currently trying to stay afloat and looking for ways to make one to 2K on smaller jobs while I work on bigger relationships. Um, Aaron, do you want to uh, elaborate at all on that or is that good enough? Yeah, I mean, I think you get the, the idea where obviously I'd rather get, you know, bigger stuff in the pipeline, but just to help with like the current monthly cash flow. I'm just looking for more like DP day jobs just to get me through. And uh, my current, marketing and stuff is terrible i do none of it so as, if, as long as my current relationships keep coming back to me i'm fine and then the last year a lot of them have just slowed down so i'm finding i actually have to try and i don't know how <laughs> so i'm like wow i have no idea how to actually find people without them coming to me so that's yeah uh, what's your what's your like ideal niche like who would you be hanging out with and doing work, video work with uh, I mean, I, ideally I do commercial work. So like high paying commercial jobs. So, you know, but like who, like, is that lawyers? Is it schools? Is it, uh, restaurants? I guess, I guess to be specific, it'd be production companies, you know, rather than a specific niche, just because I usually do bigger jobs, like with like Lowe's and like bigger brands, uh, KitchenAid, that kind of stuff. So it's like, that's what yeah. I like to do. And that's what my world is typically. So I don't even know. If I picked a niche because I was just like, oh, I just did, yeah, whatever, you know, the directors, the agencies were doing, that's what I did. So, okay. So you're saying, how can you find other production companies that would hire you to DP for a day? Yes, you got it. Yep. Okay. And are you in, are you in South Carolina? Buffalo. Uh, close. Oh man. <laughs> not even, not even. On the border. Um, yeah. Yeah. Right there. Right there. Something like that. Um, Okay. So anybody here in New York area uh, that needs a DP, uh, raise your hand. Uh, we could start there. Um, do you have a reel that you could share in the group? Yeah, I could. Yeah, yeah. Okay. One thought, Aaron. What What do you shoot with normally? Like camera or? What else is there? Yeah. Camera. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, to be honest, that's. I guess it's it's not a tricky question, but I'm just in a world where like. <laughs> Like, uh, you know, like, I, right. like mini Sony event, that kind of stuff. So that's like, but I, I always rent, um, you know, okay. Just, okay. For the job stuff like that. So, and for small time stuff, I would shoot on the FX six, FX three. Um, okay. yeah. Okay. Um, there are some PR firms that we've worked with and, and certainly there's other marketing agencies out there. I mean, I feel like I could sell a like a B-roll package for, I mean, all day long, a thousand fifteen hundred dollars. Um, I I would want to charge a little bit more than that, and and just say like, hey, I'll we'll show up at your office. We'll do a thirty minute call beforehand to kind of identify what are you know 
if somebody comes to your place of work, whether it's a restaurant or a school or whatever, what are the like main things like, oh, the statue out front, oh, the the welcome center, oh, the um, people hanging out in the lunch area. Uh, so get those obvious ones so that you don't leave and they're like, oh my gosh, we can't believe that you didn't do this. And then otherwise you're just gonna, you know, kind of wander and, and just capture, you know, footage. So to be able to come alongside a PR firm, you know, who has multiple clients, and to just tell them, hey, for, uh, you know, 1500 bucks, whatever, whatever your price point is, you said between $1,000 and $2,000. And you're essentially filming a bunch of B-roll and then handing that off to the client, giving them, okay, here's all the stuff. Because so many like PR firms, they just need content to put on social and they're going to put text over top of it, or they're going to put, they're going to add voice over to it. And maybe they're going to add captions to it. And they just need you know, maybe some slow-mo stuff, or it's just like a drone shot or, uh, and you know, sometimes it's just literally one shot and it's a 10 second or it's a 15 second. I mean, you've been on Instagram and, and Facebook, you know what, uh, some of these businesses are posting. And so for, you know, for you to pitch it as, uh, you know, a library, you know, add to your, your video library, uh, get B-roll that you can, you know, if you're partnering with anybody later on in the year and you just need more footage, I mean, fifteen hundred bucks, two thousand dollars is a no-brainer for business if they're going to get you know a good amount of high-quality looking stuff that they can add to their library of of assets. Yeah, it's fun. I never thought about something like that just to you know intentionally stay away from the editing just because that's where it can get funky. Um, yeah. So I like the approach. Yeah, just kind of approaching businesses like that and seeing where that can get me. My buddy Witty. He is a very talented wedding photographer and uh, somehow he got into like mixing cocktails and he started an Instagram channel where he just, <laughs> he's got this like amazing mustache and just like wild hair. So he's, he is very interesting to look at. Um, but, but he's also very good photographer and, and he can do video. Uh, but he's got all these relationships now with these different bars. He lives in uh, Santa Barbara area. And so, you know, there's all these like really cool restaurants and stuff. And he is packaging. Actually, I want to ask him about how this went. I spent some time with him a few weeks ago and I was like, dude, you need to package this and just start selling this. People will pay money for it. He's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. He's doing it for like peanuts. He's got so much alcohol that he's been given. He's like, I barely drink at all. And I've got all this stuff that people just keep giving me. Uh, I'm like, dude, start, please start sharing. You know, I'm looking at these reels that he's making. He's shooting at their space and then he's creating these, uh, you know, they're short, but they're punchy and so good. Um, so even just going to, you know, restaurants, they typically, you know, I feel like most restaurants are like, oh, we don't have any money, but if you can show them, Hey, I can, I can do this. And even if you're just there for two hours, right, get your chefs, like we're going to plan the time and you guys are going to be very intentional about what you're showing. And, and I'll just come in there and I'll shoot a bunch of stuff like that would be. I don't know. I, I I think that you could probably just look in town where you're at. And the unfortunate part is if you don't already own your gear, you're going to have to be kind of uh, a little bit more strategic. You can't just like pick up and go right. Unless you want to shoot iPhone, um, which I do know. own gear. Yeah, I do own FX three. Oh, you do. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. I, do own gear. I thought gotcha, you meant gotcha. like, yeah, I was trying to, yeah, I do own gear. So I could totally do all that. Yeah. And I just realized, um, not to get uh, weird or anything, but do you own any guns? No. Okay. Cause I was going to say like, when I asked the question earlier, you know, like, what do you shoot on or what do you shoot with? <laughs> yeah, and, sure. and then you said yeah. cameras. I just realized I'm like, Oh, I guess like you could have meant guns too, but um, yeah. Anyway, Context. I digress. Uh, do you think, I mean, what do, what do you think about that? Yeah. I guess Not the, the only thing follow up the... I have really is like, this is super like against like my core, at least like when I started as trying to just be a director of photography, because basically I spent my whole career avoiding smaller jobs yeah. because yeah. the more I did whatever it was I did, that's what I became known for. So like early on, I was like, OK, I'm going to do nothing except for like high end commercial cinematography. Yeah. yeah. And that worked. And so that's so like it's, it's really against like my core belief. And I'm afraid. Yeah, I guess, you know, there's just, I have a lot of mixed emotions about it, but I'm like, I gotta, I want to make money. I don't want to get a job. <laughs> so I guess that's the only thing that I kind of go against or, or like, you know, I'm just curious what your thoughts are on that. Like, cause the more I, 
the more I push into a certain niche, I feel like the more that's what I become, that's what I become known for. And so like I, this stuff, I probably wouldn't want to post, you know, just being honest. And then that goes against the whole idea, you know, so it's just super tricky where I'm like, I feel like it's, I'm, I'm conflicted if that makes sense. Yes. I love it because I feel like most people would just be like, yeah, okay. I just need to put food on the table and they wouldn't think anything of it. And then they would just share everything that they're doing because we feel like we should share everything that we're shooting. Cause it's like, why not? We're shooting. We want people to see it. But if you don't want to get hired for that kind of stuff, don't show it to anybody. Right. Um, don't put it on social. Um, you know, you could say headed to another shoot today, you know, maybe if you want to put the name of the place, cause if that is helpful, sure. Uh, but if you're not crazy about the stuff you're getting, like definitely don't promote it. Uh, if you need to, uh, eat and, you know, find ways to make a living price smart to take what opportunities and pursue something rather than just, you know, waiting for stuff to come in. Um, if you, build your website and your social presence based on what you want to be doing, the kind of work that you want to be doing, then you're fine. Because if somebody, if you do, let's say you do a restaurant and you're like, I, I'm not crazy about doing food. I don't want to be known as the restaurant food guy. Uh, when that restaurant refers you to their, their, you know, other restaurant partner for the restaurant down, down state, you could say like, Oh, you know what? Like that's, I just, Occasionally, there there are projects like that that I take because it, it's exciting or it's just convenient or whatever. But yeah, we don't normally do these, so um, I'll have to pass this time. I mean, you you get to uh, choose what you want. The problem or the challenge becomes when you start posting all this restaurant stuff, and you don't really want to be doing restaurant stuff. You're going to become known as the restaurant guy. So without you telling people who you are and doubling down on your brand uh, through the things that you're posting online, because that's really like how people are going to find you. So on your website or on social, uh, if you're not controlling that narrative, then other people are going to, you know, they're, they're going to figure out where do you fit? Where's Aaron fit? What? Oh, he's a videographer. He does a little bit of everything. But if on your Fair website, up. you're like, yeah, I work with agencies. I'm a DP. Uh, this, is the, this is the kind of high-end work that I do. And you're just showing that work. That's, that's how most people are going to know you. And then you have the advantage and the opportunity when you do get referred to say yes or no. Yeah, that's very helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. So any, uh, any action item or any, any thought, like where do you go from here? Yeah, I think for me, it's actually just maybe having something online. Like I, I still have a terrible, my site's mediocre. My Instagram's non-existent. Like I, you know, like people, people to this day don't know what I do and I've been doing this for 10 years. So I, <laughs> that's my first thought is I'm like, okay, I should at least just start there. And then even if I go to these places, you know, cause that's partially, I think my hesitant hesitation is I go to a bar and be like, I shoot $200,000 commercials, but they're like, I don't see anything, <laughs> you know? So I think even that I already see like a barrier to entry because of how much I pigeonholed myself of not being present online. So I think I'll do that. Mm -hmm. And then, um, and even as you were talking, it made me start thinking, maybe I'm thinking too small and that I could think a little bigger and that I'm just getting too panicky over money. And I'm like, well, maybe I should go after actually just what I'm good at because that'd be silly for me to go shoot a bar video. Not silly, but like, you know, it, it seems like a waste of time. The amount of time for me to go do that versus go try to find a new production company or something like that. Yeah. Um, so very helpful. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. One, one thing you might want to consider too, just if just to keep it really, really simple, if you're able to use any of the footage that you've shot, like for these, these big jobs, are you able to use stuff online? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I might even just think about doing like a, make a grid, like on Instagram, you know, and, and just highlight, you know, nine, even, even if it's like 10 seconds, you know, each clip is like 10 seconds and maybe it's just one clip but something so that somebody goes to your presence and there's your online presence and they're like oh wow okay this is this is really high-end stuff right just for them to get a glimpse of it and then you could you know just take that show reel you know combine all those clips together and throw them on uh you know your your main website um and don't don't over over complicate it right like if you're if you're just trying to get hired as a dp i think that's a pretty simple website Right. With a simple call to action. Let me see some of your work. Um, maybe, maybe if I heard your story, <clears throat> I would love that. Like, I think that would be a really cool touch, you know, just to hear what you're passionate about. But uh, you don't have to, you don't have to go that far. But if I'm a director and I'm looking to hire, 
you know, somebody or a producer or whatever, and I'm looking for somebody like you, I'm going to go with a person that I vibe with. And if I'm just going off of the work, it's like, okay, but this guy might be a total, you know, tool bag. Um, but if I can hear like, wow, he sounds like he really cares about people. And, um, and he's kind of funny and kind of quirky like me, uh, I should totally give him a call. Right. That's, I mean, that's, that's going to be a differentiator for you. If you have anything that's, you know, Hey, I'm Aaron Rizzo. I'm a total goofball, love cinematography. You know, I don't know. That's, the, that's like the video that I would make. <clears throat> yeah. Got it. But anything yeah. with some personality, right? Yeah. You're, you're super helpful. Literally have been thinking about doing this for seven years. So thanks. I should just, so how long, how long will it take you to do? Like to do what you just said? Yeah. Whew. If I actually was a man and did the thing, probably a week to do like a lot of it, <laughs> you know, like to even including making that video and all that stuff. I just kind of get in my own head and then I'm like, you know, my site doesn't look good enough for this or that. And I just, I think I just got to start doing the thing. Cause yeah. So I think that's the thing I got to get out of my own way with. It's just yeah. to, to post. Cause like you said, I have so many commercials that are at this point, they're a year old, but still, you know, it's whatever Josh Allen, Tom Brady, these big name people. And I'm like, why aren't I not? Oh my gosh, dude, my, <laughs> the, the, the reel that we have on the top center of the tell studios page. I'm so embarrassed. I, I don't have a beard. I look like I'm like 16. <laughs> uh, even though it's only like, you know, seven, it's probably eight years old. But all the work is like, it's super old, but it's good. Like nobody, the only people that no one care are like me in any production friend of mine who like gives a rip, but they're not hiring me. So I don't care what they think. I mean, I do actually, but I shouldn't care um, unless they're going to start hiring me and they don't care if my work's old. They know it's good. They know we can produce good stuff. So I think you said it. The magic word is start. Go ugly early. Like don't just get out of your head. Just do the thing. Guys, I just, I don't know if I'm just feeling older and wiser, <clears throat> but I'm more willing today to make mis mistakes where I think like when you're early, you should be like, oh yeah, I'm free. Like I, I make whatever, you know, I'm just going to experiment and try all the things. But I am, I'm, it just has taken me a long, long time to say it is worth taking the risk and just doing the thing. And it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but the fact that you're doing it, that you're trying, that you're putting something, uh, that you're, you're putting effort into it. Um, it's just going to elevate you as a person and it's going to give you more courage and it's going to give, it's going to create more opportunities. And when you find time the next time to, you know, to do it, it's going to be better and you're going to have more confidence and, um, and people are going to feel that. So you got this, you can do it. You do it for everybody else, right? Carve out an afternoon and, and don't overthink it. Don't overcomplicate it. If you showed up on video for 10 or 15 seconds, and then you cut to just B roll on top of you. And then you signed off at the end. That's all it could be. Right. But create that, like I'm Aaron Rizzo and this is all of my favorite work that I love to get hired for as a DP. Bam, 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 bam. Contact information is below. I love Reese's peanut butter cups and my favorite show is the office. Call me, you know, it, it can, it can be, well, yeah. Those are all true for me. I don't know if they're true for you. True for me. Wow, yeah. Although my name isn't Aaron, uh, that's yeah. not true for me either. <laughs> okay. Is that helpful? I'm so fired up right now. Yeah. I'm, thank you so much, dude. Yep. Yep. You did it. You did it. I don't have to come to these one again and I'll be fine. So thank you so much. Super helpful. He's like, great. I got what I need. 10 X filmmaker. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Good stuff. Okay. Repeat, repeat, report back to us uh, in two weeks and just let us know how it's going. Okay. Uh, let's see a couple more things here in the chat. Uh, oh, John Williams. I have a question about retainer contracts. If there's something you feel like you have experience with to share, uh, John Williams, what's up? Uh, what's your question? Or, I mean, I see kind of your question, but is there anything more you want to add there? Yeah, there's definitely more I want to add. Um, been really fortunately blessed to have some, um, retainer contracts in my past and I have them now been awesome clients, but I honestly just kind of forced gumped into them where most people struggle and fight to get retainer contracts. I just kind of, they were great clients. And I said, well, let's just do a retainer. And they were like, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Um, but it was always, a, I mean, they've been great friends, 
we have this history together, 15 years roughly. And, um, but I don't have a contract. It's always just a handshake. And I'm just curious if, if that's something that you have experience with, do you have a contract in place for yourself? And because I finally heard the podcast that you had about the creative law firm or creative law shop or whatever they're called. And yeah. uh, is that something like you had them do just to kind of protect yourself? Goodness gracious. All right. Everybody just pretend like we didn't hear John share all of that about not having a contract. And dude, this isn't 1965, John, right? You can't like spit on your hand and shake. Some, it's not, it doesn't work like that anymore. Yeah, but this is uh, North Carolina, man. We're old school. <laughs> uh okay well good for you I'm, i think i'm gonna move um <laughs> detroit you can't you can't do that in detroit we got unions here uh people will come after you i'm just kidding um so yeah i think i mean i think <laughs> i think having a contract is a good idea <laughs> oh yeah um you know it's like if if you're even here's here's and this is interesting because it's like you know you come from a different part of the country or the world or whatever. And it's like, yeah, no, your word is your bond. Like that's how it should be. Right. Like having a written contract, I don't know when those started, but they haven't always been around, but it's like, man, if we could just be people of integrity and do what we're say we're going to do, but that's unfortunately not always the case. When I started this business, Studio Sherpas, that, you know, adjacent to my, my production company, <clears throat> uh, I started it with Matt Davis. So if you were around in the early days, you know, Matt, we were on the podcast together for the first, I don't know, 50 plus episodes. And we built our first course together. And so we did all this work together. But, you know, I consulted. I had a, a friend that was a lawyer. And I just said, like, I feel like I probably need it. We probably need some kind of a contract. He's like, oh, my gosh, dude, like, you have to have a contract. Um, and, and really, because, like, I knew Matt and I had known him for a long time. But you know, you don't know all the things. And I think the contract with the contract, a, a formal contract uh, is to protect you from the things that you don't know um, and the things that you don't know yet and the things that you don't know yet about yourself even. I mean, not only can a contract protect you from somebody else, but it can also protect you from yourself. And what we could have done with this contract is it could have been 50, 50 where it's like, okay, we both own the business 50, 50. And so we both have to come to an agreement on whatever the thing is. But my friend, Matt said, my other friend, Matt, the lawyer, Matt Masio, he said, don't do a 50, 50. He's like, you can do like revenue share or whatever, 50, 50. So you guys split the revenue, but your contract, the legal binding stuff for the business, somebody has to have majority stake so that when there is a stalemate, somebody can make the final decision and granted like you know that is going to be maybe not that comforting for the person that doesn't have the majority stake he said you know another thing you could do is have somebody else you know have kind of like a silent partner middleman person that that person could be the the tiebreaker and could just be the mediator type person <clears throat> so you could do you could build it like that if you wanted uh but you know after ch chatting with Matt Davis, my business partner, I said, Hey, I, I want to, cause I'm like, I'm a, a lot more, I don't want to say business minded, but like, um, I, I move fast. I start things quick. And so I just told him, I was like, I'm, I'm willing to do the 51. <laughs> I'll take, I'll take this one for the team. I'll do 51%. You can have 49%. Um, and he was fine with it. And, um, so like there was no tension there, but you can already know, like if there's going to be tension, at that who gets you know 51 and who gets 49 it's like okay well if you can't figure this out maybe we shouldn't hop into this agreement at all so when it came time for our um business relationship to end it was a very easy conversation because in the contract it laid out um if and when you, you guys dissolve this partnership these are the three or or these are the things that will happen or can happen and, and I basically presented them to Matt. I said, Hey, you can have the business and I'm out. Um, I'll take the business and you're out or, uh, we can just let the business die. And then, uh, you know, but if you take the business, it's going to, it's going to die. Right. We just kind of, Matt was at a place in his life where he just couldn't, he couldn't run the business. I could, and I wanted to keep doing it. And, um, I wasn't, I wasn't going to, I mean, I wasn't going to give it to Matt. Um, I just thought that was a dumb idea, but I could have, and I could have started something else. Uh, I gave him an incentive to say like, if you give me the business, I'll, you know, buy you out, like with whatever money we've got in the bank account, you can have, you know, your 
portion of that or the majority of it or something. And I'll just keep running with this thing. And so, and that's, that's where we, he's, he's like, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll take money and, uh, and run. I think there's a song there. Um, and, uh, and anyway, we, we've been able to remain friends because it was all drawn out. And because we had conversation, we had expectations, um, clear expectations. If you ever get in, you know, with some crazy client or the, the people change, you know, roles change, uh, and you, and that person's not there anymore. Uh, okay. Well, what, what does the agreement say? Uh, it's like, oh, well, we don't have an agreement. Like, you know, this is what we've said. I mean, people are, there's some bad people out there that want to take advantage of people. And, uh, and that's, that's when it comes in real handy to have something. So, you know, in my mind, I would say like any opportunity in the future, I would for sure have a contract. Um, if you're comfortable not having a contract, wow, you got a stronger stomach than I do. Um, but you know, when I think about like the live, like my, my family and like my assets and just all the things that I, I want some protection for, uh, I just, <laughs> I think I, you know, I think like a producer, right? Like what, what could go wrong? And so I'm just trying to think of all of the things and I'm like, I'm not doing anything that would make somebody mad. I don't think, but then I find out, like, Oh, people are mad at me. What the heck? Um, I didn't know, you know, and, and before I know it, it's like, Oh, you're actually being sued. It's like, wait, what the heck? Seriously? Like over that, like, what the heck? So I'm just, uh, I think, vomiting all over the place uh is this helpful probably not well no i mean it, it is because it's your first-hand experience with having dealt with that so i totally get it and um the question really is more from my perspective is focused more on retainer do you have you do you have retainer clients uh currently currently no uh, but even for our retainer clients um i mean it's essentially the same contract uh, and that we spell out, like, here's what you're, here's how many hours you're getting per month. Here's how much you owe us per month. Here are the deliverables that you're getting per month. I mean, all of that, the expectations are in there. And, and then it's, you know, if you don't use these hours, here's how they carry over. Uh, here's what you lose if you don't use them. Um, you know, all of that stuff. And I'm pretty sure that, uh, there is a retainer contract in the hemisphere, or the ecosystem of what you have access to. Okay. If even you just took a peek at it to say like, what, how, how does this look different from like a regular contract that you would send out? But I, I mean, in your mind, is there, is there a difference between a retainer contract other than it's like ongoing versus like just a, a one-off project contract? Yeah. And I, honestly, and you just kind of spelled it out a little bit for me just now um, for what you okay. have. So, and, and I'm going to be, you know, brutally honest and transparent. I've, just signed up kind of here in the last month or so with Studio Sherpa, so I haven't got to go through the library of everything. Um, yeah, so what have you been doing the last month, man? It's like <laughs> I got to work those contracts that I don't have. Um, <laughs> but um, but yeah, no, it's uh, that's good stuff because I know when I talked to Michael about this, he he asked me a similar question. I was like, I don't know because I just don't have. I mean, they're just they've been great clients. Yeah. Could, yeah couldn't ask for better people. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I do know and recognize the, and understand the value of having a contract in place. So what I had seen before when I had looked, mind you briefly, the contract stuff was just more like, we're going to do this and it's going to be this price kind of one per project contracts. And yep. If there is something in there and I'll look, uh, the studio Sherpa stuff to see if there's more of the kind of what you're talking about, rolling over hours, that kind of stuff so that I can, in essence, get that prepared for the next song time we come together as uh, with my clients to talk about that because i just i recognize how valuable that is to have but i also want to do in a way uh get an answer for michael because i didn't know I, I was like i just i keep saying this this way i keep like yeah. force gumped my way into it so many people i've had yeah, yeah. a lot of people say uh, you know they struggle with it and i'm like i just kind of it kind of fell into my lap yeah, and been very fortunately blessed that it did. So yes, you absolutely answered my question, and I thank you very much. I just know Sweet. I need to go and dive deeper into the Studio Sherpa stuff. Yeah, if you, uh, I mean, you can, um, you can always send an email to Tina. It's uh, her address, email address is support at studiosherpas.com. and she will probably be able to direct you 
to direct you right to the uh, the contracts. Um, I think I want to say that uh, Jake Sturgis, the Retainer Revolution is like a whole little uh, I think bonus inside of the Ten X Filmmaker stuff, and I think inside of their the lesson that Jake Sturgis did, I think we include a retainer contract. I could be mistaken that it, it's not there, but um, Tina should be able to to uncover that uh, for you um, if you can't find it on your own. I, I would just send her an email instead of digging through all the places. But um, yeah, I think that's I think it's a smart move. And you know, whenever you have uh, with with this current client, how long have you been working with them? Uh, this current client, I have been working with them on our handshake contract. Well, actually, both clients that I have that are on retainer for approximately seven or eight years, and I've known them for seventeen, roughly years. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, there's like just a small part of me that would would say, and again, not knowing the relationship or anything like that. Um, you know, if they're the owners, then, you know, may, maybe it's a different story, but if they're not the owners, then, then I may just say like, Hey, like, you know, I'm thinking about just putting together like a little formal something that spells out our, you know, exactly like what we're promising you. If anything changes in your business, like if you hand off like all of my video stuff to somebody else and somebody else is running that, like, my goodness, that, that would, you know, I, I would just be freaking out and would want to make sure that, you know, I, I'm, I'm providing that it's clear what we're, what we've promised you. And, um, I mean, I wouldn't want you to do anything to jeopardize the relationship, but I think that, you know, if you've known them for that long, there's probably, there's probably a way for you to bring it up and, um, and just let them know, you know, a potential concern if things ever got handed over or, or they got bought or, you know, something like that. This really makes me think because like, I've got like, six different clients that are like that 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 are multi-year things and um oh my gosh i'm sitting here like okay so we just ended you know june <laughs> and so this is the new fiscal year for all of these cats <laughs> and so really having something like in writing and some kind of like a um the i know we don't have too much longer but the the have you ever heard of doing like a retainer type thing where I don't, I don't have consistent monthly deliverables and monthly stuff that I'm shooting. But if we take the whole school year into account, there's recurring projects that happen throughout the year. There'll be some fundraising stuff. There'll be a state of school address for one of them. There'll be, you know, each one has different things. And I like to leave stuff open to like for them to go, hey, you know what? We'd really like to do a new brand film because the teachers that are in it are no longer here or we just want to refresh this or that. And I'm, I'm just taking things piece by piece. And it, it does take a little more work to figure those projects out and to do those. Um, and I don't feel like they fit into a retainer, but like, what if it's like an annual, like retainer where we figure, you know, if they're spending 15, 20, $30,000 or something, if I figure out kind of what their average is and say, how about if we do that monthly bill that monthly, and then we chip away at these at these different projects that we normally do. And then that way I'd have a couple of things. I'd have some recurring revenue that I could count on because sometimes they take a while to, you know, get through the invoices and things um, and that type of thing. I, I think I've just been having like this kind of hurdle of like doing retainers because I haven't been able to crack the code for like what each of them would be like per month. We have like advice on like yeah yeah um anybody, um, anybody else, else relate, relate to, that? to that honestly that's kind of where i am okay um, mm. so what i do with my client again this is more the handshake deal but he was like he came um i don't even remember where we started at we were starting at like 30 or forty thousand dollars a year and um it's just like i got four times a year that I have big projects. And instead of me just sending him four invoices, we just said, we we're like, well, doesn't it make more for him and his budget? Can he spread those out? And then it became, I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? That makes it better for me. He'll, you know, kind of flatten out the peaks and valleys. Um, and so it, it, that's where like, I'm hoping to be able to take this. I'm going to reach out, like you said, the support and talk to Tina, uh, see if I can find that contract. But because basically it's, from my perspective, it was 
we're going to roll over all the hours you don't use every month, which like right now is a slow time. But in September, you know, if he has like, I don't know, whatever it is, let's just say it's 20 hours a month. And then he needs all of those, you know, uh, 80 hours in September, then we'll just put it all in September and then right. just kind of keep on going. So that's kind of how, from a handshake perspective, I did it. Now I just yeah. want to kind of get it documented a little bit better so I can cover my tail. Yep. Yeah. So I think uh, one way, and Jake talks about this in the, the, the interview that I did with him. And then also the, the retainer that I share with the uh, concrete company that we worked with, we basically had a, a workshop with them, talk through all of their big dreams and goals. If they had all the videos that they could ever want, what would they be? What purpose would they serve? And then I just built packages. Oh, these are, you know, half day B-roll, full day B-roll. Here's brand story. Brand story costs, you know, roughly this. It's a, a day of shooting interviews and a day of shooting B-roll. It's two days uh, or, you know, 20 hours or whatever. Um, so tying like the deliverables to a certain amount of uh, dollars and or hours and then additional hours can be purchased, you know, for this much. So if you're budgeting $50,000 a year for video, here's the menu of items that we know that we normally sell to you guys or other schools like these you know, one-off stories, a highlight video of an event, uh, gala video, um, B-roll library stuff. Uh, this is how much they cost. So you guys can figure out what things that you need. And um, and then if we go above and beyond the allotted hours, then it's just going to be this much in addition uh, on top of what you're already paying us per month. And we'll just send you a separate invoice uh, in addition to the 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 auto pay that you've already got set up. Uh, so that's what I would recommend Larry is thinking through what are those like common deliverables that you're already doing and uh, productizing them, really creating packages because then that, you know, you can go to another school and you can sell one of those things or you can sell the idea of a retainer. You sign up with us, you know, for $30,000, you're guaranteed to get, you know, X amount of videos. Um, also like, you know, shorts, like, social media shorts and things like how much do those cost and letting people know how many videos could they get you know if they hired you it's like oh wow you could get this many videos um otherwise it's just like this you know big lump sum what do we get and it's like i don't you know we're not really sure what we need right now well, great here's a menu you can start brainstorming let's go let's do an hour long or two hour long workshop and i can start pulling out some ideas on knowing what things you have coming up and i'll tell you what other schools have done and give you some advice on if these were my dollars, how I might spend them. Um, what do you think of that approach? Fantastic. Perfect. It's like the, the timing, the timing is great because the, um, yeah, just had the, the one lady left and, uh, the, the new lady is like super excited. They're like, they're like emailing me and calling me Dude. because we've got, they basically, the lady that was outgoing, she went ahead and paid prepaid for like, you know, a few different things. And so we're basically taking those. I'm already paid for them. <laughs> just yeah. taking them and making them now. Um, but they're going to need a good bit more uh, for this year. And you do that workshop with them again, like, yeah, like paint the picture of all of the things. If you know, okay, let's talk about recruiting. Let's talk about employee retention or employee recruitment. Let's talk about, um, I don't know, educational videos that you should make for parents or whatever. Think of all those things, paint the picture so they can be like, wow, there's so many things that we can choose from this one sample that I've, that I included. They, I think they originally had told me that their budget for video, it was going to be like 120,000 for the year, which they had spent about that much the year before. So they were like, yeah, we think our budget's about the same, maybe a little bit less than what we spent last year. I'm like, okay, we did the workshop, painted this picture. I said, if you guys do all of the videos that we talked about from this workshop, this is you know, a week or two later after we built all the packages and stuff. So if you do all the videos, it's going to be about $165,000. And they're like, whew, you know, that's, that's more than, you know, we thought we we're going to spend a little bit less, probably not going to spend 165. I'm like, okay, but I'm just saying like, you don't have to do all these things. I just painted the picture of all the things you guys talked about. Well, they ended up spending uh, like, uh, I think it was 150,000 for the year. So they spent 20 or 30,000 more than what they originally intended. And it was because I was able to like, you know, take all of the things and put them on paper instead of like, you know, oh, I have an idea and like, you know, people have ideas, but then the idea of the workshop is like, okay, let's get all the ideas on paper 
And then, and then you guys can review it as a team and go over what's, what's most important. What's the least important. What are some, you know, maybe we'll get to this later in the year, but like, let's get you on a retainer right now. So you can start picking and choosing as things come up and there's going to be last minute things. So let's create uh, you know, this last minute package that might be B-roll only or like event coverage, you know, it's two hours, like most of the events that we're getting hired for are about two hours long, um, you know, just create those things that you're normally getting hired for and tie some pricing to them. Okay. Uh, we're at our time. Uh, this was a great call. Lots of good questions. Uh, thanks for showing up guys. Um, even Aaron said it's a great call right there. Um, stoked to have a community. Me too. Uh, don't forget, uh, October 6th through the 8th, uh, Onward Summit, the fifth almost annual. Um, put it in your calendars. The doors are going to open here. I mean, hopefully next week. I got so many things going on, you guys. Um, I need to get the, the doors open so people can start saving their spots. But um, pencil those dates in. Activities are going to start Sunday evening on October 6th. We're going to hang out uh, for some cocktails. Uh, it's going to be local to our studio in Auburn Hills. Nope, Lake Orion. Where, where do I live? In Clarkston uh, is where my home is. Uh, so uh, we'll be hanging out Sunday night, and then sessions will start uh, Monday and go all day Monday, and then we'll be hanging out. We'll do dinner and uh, fun activities on Monday night, and then same kind of format for Tuesday sessions all day, and then we'll be hanging out uh, Tuesday night, and, uh, and then you can go home. Uh, some other people, some people stay the night Tuesday and fly out Wednesday morning. Um, but that's the gist. Uh, this could be the last one that I do. Um, if not the last one, I'm, I think I'm for sure taking next year off and going to try to figure out how to make this event profitable. Um, <laughs> so it's a grind, but I love it. And um, I'm excited. Uh, and I'm hoping that people that have been on the fence uh, attending this event will just say, okay, I'm doing it. It's the fifth one. Uh, we've got it dialed in. It's a great, great time. Great time to connect with other people. And uh, it's just a really, really cool space. Um, I will highly recommend it if nobody else is here that has been, but I don't know if I'll make it this year. <laughs> oh, come on, dude. <laughs> I know. Get here. Yeah. You better or else. All right. Uh, thanks for letting me plug the commercial. Uh, stay tuned for more info to come. Let me know how I can help you. Appreciate you guys. Um, okay. That's all. Go get them. Great to see your faces. So there you have it. There's the little glimpse of 10X Filmmaker. If you are interested in 10X Filmmaker, you can learn more about it by going to studiosherpas.com slash 10X Filmmaker. And feel free to reach out if you have other questions about it. My email is ryan at studiosherpas.com. And if you liked this video and you wanna leave a comment, please do that below. We'd love to hear from you. And if there's any way that I can help you in your video business journey, please don't hesitate to reach out. And for some of you, I'm gonna see you in a couple of weeks at the Onward Summit. So it's right around the corner. Uh, can't wait for that. And uh, okay, bye for now. <laughs>